Walmart Plus members save on meeting up with friends. Save on having them over for dinner with free delivery with no hidden fees or markups. That's groceries plus napkins plus that vegetable chopper to make things a bit easier. Plus, members save on gas to go meet them in their neck of the woods. Plus, when you're ready for the ultimate sign of friendship, start a show together with your included Paramount Plus subscription. Walmart Plus members save on this plus so much more. Start a 30-day free trial at walmartplus.com. Paramount Plus, a central plan only. Separate registration required. See Walmart Plus terms and conditions. This episode is brought to you by Indeed. We're driven by the search for better. But when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search. Match with Indeed. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. Listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash MBO. Terms and conditions apply. What we haven't had a chance to talk about yet is Kamala's speech. Well, uh, listen, so I fell asleep early like a grandma this (laughs) night. So I was watching this very early at the gym the next morning and I was getting a little misty, not going to lie. My version of crying in the club now is crying at the gym. Welcome to Millennial, the home of pretend adulting and real relaxed summer hangouts before our fall is overtaken by the 2024 election season. I'm Laura. And I'm Pamela. No Andrew this week. Uh, Andrew is taking a well-deserved break, but, um, you know, as per usual, we can't survive technically without him. Uh, It took us a little bit of time to get our stream up and going this evening. Uh, But don't worry, I still bothered him. (laughs) I pestered him and was like, this this isn't working. How did we do it? (laughs) Yeah, but we we got it going. We got it going. We, Mm -hmm. Pam and I, we can make anything happen, I think. We're scrappy like that. Yeah, I think so. I agree with that. I like that term scrappy. Scrappy. Yeah, you just get you get it done. (laughs) Well, Andrew and myself went to podcast movement last week with Micah and Eric of MuggleCast. Uh, You can check out our live episode of Millennial in room 213 on the 14th floor of the Gaylord Resort because we definitely were not important enough to have a live show anywhere in the Gaylord Resort. So did it in the hotel room, but it was honestly such a fun conversation And if you want to hear the antics of what it sounds like when we're all in a hotel room together for the first time in over a decade, definitely go check that out. We're going to have to listen to that. That sounds like so much fun. It was fun. Pam, I have to say we missed you, though. Oh, I missed you. We really did. There, There was a lot of like, we really wish Pam was here. We really wish Chloe was here, like have the whole team complete. But um next time mm, for sure because we were talking about like how good it was to get us all together just for like being in person and just like brainstorming about the shows and we were like maybe we could do something once a year where we all get together and that would be so cute plan and strategize also uh at podcast movement the other really really great thing that we did was a listener meetup so we got together with About 20 to 25 of our listeners on the MuggleCast side of things. And we had such a good time. It, you know, it was a hangout that we originally slotted for two hours and it ended up going for like five because we were all having so much fun. And also because Micah kept buying people drinks. Oh, Uh, Lord. (laughs) But it it was such a good time. Uh, I loved getting to meet everybody it was the first time I've done like a podcasting event in person since pre COVID. So it was really nice to see some of my co-hosts and, and see a lot of our listeners in person. So that's a really good turnout too, especially for something that's not really like mm-hmm. podcast movement is not really t- geared towards listeners. So you're talking about 25 people that came out specifically to see you all. So that's great turnout. Yeah. And what was funny about it is it definitely gave us like an added cool factor because really? Yeah. Like other convention goers were like, what's going on over there? Yeah. 
Oh, well, see, podcast movements regretting the fact they didn't give you all a live panel. That's the thing. So we had multiple people come up to us thinking that this was some kind of like official podcast movement event. And it definitely wasn't. As a matter of fact, I have to think that what we did was unsanctioned, but you know, (laughs) YOLO. And when me and Mark were in the elevator on the way back up, Afterwards, I was complaining about how tired I was, but I was like, oh, I had so much fun. I didn't want to leave, but I'm really tired. And this other lady in the elevator was like, oh, are you talking about the Top Golf event? Because Podcast Movement held like a Top Golf event for everybody if they wanted to go. We didn't. This lady asked us about Top Golf, and we were like, no, we didn't go to that. Um, we did a listener meetup, and she goes, oh, cool. What company hosted it? And we were like, no company. It was just us. And right at that moment, we hit our floor. So like the elevator beeped and we just bounced and left this lady looking super perplexed. She was like, damn, they're cool. (laughs) I mean, honestly, I will say it was I learned a lot of uh, good information at Podcast Movement, but it definitely had like a corporate feel to it. I can see that. It did feel really cool to be like the cool indie kids there. Well, and and you know what's so funny, like not not to interrupt you, but I just I never feel like (laughs) more grateful for everything that we do that we can do on our own because we've been doing this for so long together. It kind of is like a well-oiled machine than I do when I see these like any other podcasts like big or small, they, they have like a studio that some company has given them. Yeah. They have a producer. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, that's cute. You know, like we're a three person operation Four if you count Chloe, but she's doing social media, um, you know, but that's it. We don't have a studio. We don't have a backer. We don't have somebody that comes in just to produce the audio. Like we do it all ourselves. Yeah. Literally everything is in house and all of that is why we just continue to be so thankful to all of y'all at home who've been supporting us over the years. And like, I don't know, it it just it's really humbling to all of us that y'all support this show and support MuggleCast in such a way that allows us to make these shows a priority so we can do them every week, but also so that we can go to industry events to take away some ideas for things that we can do to improve the show for y'all and add extra benefits. Um, So it really is the perfect example of what Andrew says all the time when he says y'all's support of these shows is what allows us to keep them a priority and also reinvest in them. And going to podcast movement was definitely a big part of it. For yeah, sure. I'm so I'm so excited to yeah. hear about the panels y'all went to and like um, any like inspired ideas you all had while you were there because I'm sure there's oh, so yeah. much. Yeah, there's gonna be a debrief. I'm ready. <laughs> I know that's probably getting into some like shop talk that listeners don't care about, <laughs> but but look at what your support your your Patreon dollars are going seriously. to seriously. We wouldn't be able to if it weren't for that. So, Well, speaking of Patreon, we have another reminder, right? That's right. This year's physical gift for our $10 patrons is here. It is the M Word Cloud t-shirt. On this brand new shirt, the M of Millennial is formed using lots of different references to the show. Things like all three of our names, Andrew, Laura, Pam, Pals, Kamala, but also dozens more. I think we managed to get Coconut Tree on there. There's probably some stuff on there about like hot girl walking and (laughs) it's really beautiful. Um, Pam, I know you modeled it for us in all of our social media advertising, but when you go and look at the, the M, it's actually really impressive when you see just how many little inside jokes from the show we managed to cram into that word cloud. The shirt is like, it's so much fun. This is one of my favorite designs we've ever done. And I, you know, the last time we did a shirt, I think we went all out with a design that was super unique, but I love that this is super subtle. You can wear it loud and proud, but like, know that you have Mm -hmm. a little secret because it doesn't have like 
podcasts plastered all over it. Um, and also like the, the shirt is so comfy. I know that you have yours too. It's yeah. really soft and stretchy. It's a great shirt. I've been wearing it, um, to the gym, not every day. Cause that would be kind of gross, but it's in my gym rotation for sure. And the printing is like really well done too. So I've washed mine a few times and it's holding up great. Same. Well, we are handling the fulfillment process differently this year. Starting in September, every bay or $10 patron and higher will be receiving a unique redemption link. Then all you'll have to do is pick your shirt size, enter your address, and your shirt will be printed and mailed to you. If you are not a patron, it's not too late please pledge by Saturday, September 6th at the Bay level or higher, and you will then receive your redemption link in three months. And immediately you'll get benefits like our monthly roll calls, variety shows, Zoom hangouts, and new after darks, live streams, and ad-free millennial every week. You can also sign up for an annual subscription to save 10% over at patreon.com slash millennial. And once again, just wanted to say your support is really what keeps this show running. It can be expensive and time consuming to run a weekly podcast like this. So the fact that y'all have just continued to support us over time has meant so much. And putting together these physical gifts not only gives us a chance to be a little bit creative about what it is we want to do for y'all that year, but it's also our way of saying thank you. So thank you. And one last announcement, we will be taking a break next week for Labor Day here in the US. So no new episode, but we will be back for our regular episode releases the following week. Well, Pam, uh, again, we were really longing for you to be in DC with us, especially when we were watching the DNC. But I have to think that you were tuned in at home. I was I was gonna text you all a bunch of times. It's like there's no way they're watching the DNC. Oh, yeah, they're out podcast movement. I should have known you're all (laughs) all a bunch of nerds. You're probably having a watch party. (laughs) But yeah, it it was great. So much fun. I didn't watch um, the whole thing every night because it is quite a long broadcast no but I tuned in live for a few things and definitely watched all of the larger more noteworthy speeches as well and they were all really good the roll call was so much fun I'm sure you all talked about that (sighs) my god my my state of Georgia did me proud it was so good your favorite song turned down for what oh I know yeah (laughs) <laughs> and I mean, he he put a little bit of uh, get low energy get low. in there the towards that I was the thinking end. Of. Yeah, that's like the true millennial anthem. <laughs> yeah, he couldn't do the whole thing. It w- right. He would have had to censor a lot <laughs> to be right. able to do that. Um, but yeah, that was so cool. And uh, yeah, we definitely did watch. Um, there was a lot of complaining on night one because it went so late. Um, and we we chatted about that on our little bonus show that we did so we don't have to spend a ton of time on it but it was not only past uh sleepy joe's bedtime it was also past all of our bedtimes by the time (laughs) he got to speak so we were kind of annoyed about that but what we haven't had a chance to talk about yet is kamala's speech on the last night well, uh, listen, so I fell asleep early like a grandma this <laughs> night. So I was watching this very early at the gym the next morning and I was getting a little misty, not going to lie. My version of crying in the club now is crying at the gym. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just on the treadmill watching. This I think that she really struck a fantastic balance of introducing herself and her personal story and how that really weaves into her policy. And I think it was a really good start. I know that some of the complaints included the fact that she didn't go into detail with regards to how she's going to make some of these things in her platform happen. But I think that's to be expected. The DNC speech is cut for time. It's not really a place where you're supposed to do a lot of that. Yeah, but I think that she like her, um, her, her like overall mission basically was outlined very well, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not really the place to get into like policy wonk, right content. Um, What she needed to do was seem presidential like that 
was the number one objective for her. And she did it easily, by the way. It was so impressive to see how much the tide has turned on perceptions of Kamala because I definitely remember like a month ago, there was a lot of concern because we just hadn't seen too much from her as vice president. There was a lot of concern about yeah. is is she the one for this moment? And she's shown that she is. And I was concerned too, even as somebody that like, you know, she started her career in the Bay Area. This, I mean, Kamala Harris is a name that we have heard, you know, at least over here growing up. Um, attorney general, just like her rising in the ranks and stuff like that. Um, but I, I don't think even I knew a lot about her history. And I think that that really kind of helped understand who she is. And, you know, I was already going to vote for her anyway, but I think that it probably went a long way to people that maybe only know her for one or two headlines and maybe even some headlines that are not so great because she's fumbled the ball a few times for sure. We talked about that even when um, Joe uh, introduced her as her as his running mate as well. So, yeah. Well, and the thing is, she hadn't run a very successful presidential campaign in 2020 exactly. either. So like there was just yeah. I think there were some fears about that all coming back to haunt her. Yeah. But but it, it, I don't just think, like, I don't think it ended up mattering. No. And I think that proves really that timing is everything. Um, I also mm-hmm. got like really emotional for Elizabeth Warren because she was yeah. so emotional up there. And it's like she I think that she people like her, people like Hillary, I think they understand that like the time when they were going for it was not the right time. And it's just really beautiful to see that they have put that aside instead of being bitter about it, you know, it would be really easy for them to be like, that could be me. That should have been me. They're throwing all of their support behind Kamala because she's ready now. And like, it looks like the country is ready now. And that, that is, I think that's like all I wanted from the Hillary campaign. And I just felt like that was missing. Like the hope and the magic was missing when Hillary was running. And like every feeling that I wanted to feel when like voting for Hillary, when talking about that campaign, I feel like we're getting to experience that this year with Kamala Harris's. So I agree. There's like, there's not the amount of hubris that Mm -hmm. we were getting from the Clinton campaign. Unfortunately, there was a sense, not just amongst her campaign, but I think amongst a lot of us as voters that it could never happen, that Hillary was going to be a shoe in and um, that Trump would never get elected. And I think that now that everyone understands how wrong that line of thinking is, there's a lot more energy being put behind a candidate that energizes people, um, but also isn't Trump. And I think that's super appetizing for people, especially people who didn't like Joe or Trump. Yeah. You know, and she I I mean, I thought that her speech, there were portions of it that I thought were definitely intended to appeal to the more independent minded amongst us, even some of the more like moderate conservative viewpoints. I mean, she literally talked about having the most lethal military in the world, which is more something I would expect to hear at the RNC, not the DNC. Yeah. She struck a really good balance. I mean, because at the same time, you know, she talks about a ceasefire, which is something that people have been begging to hear talk about and directly um, and rightly so uh, addressed Palestinian people's rights to like live freely. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that We've we've seen it even on this show. It can be a really difficult, nuanced line to walk in in saying like Israel has the right to defend itself, but it doesn't. It shouldn't be overreacting the way that it is right now. Is you know more or less what she said, and that Palestinians have a right to self determination. Um, unfortunately, it. It's very controversial to have an opinion like that. So it was good to hear somebody stand up on the stage and say it. 
Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm excited. I can't wait. Yeah, I think it it really helps to it. It should. I don't know why it should have because I think that we were all worried that it, this was all coming too late. But I think it really is helping her that she's running a campaign on less than a hundred days, and so we really don't have too much time to feel fatigued. No, we gotta go. Yeah, but yeah, that is uh, that's all the political talk we'll do for this week. I just felt like we had to talk about the acceptance speech of the person who I think is pretty likely to be president this time of year from now. So I was really excited to hear your take on it, Pam. Mm -hmm. Well, there will certainly be no shortage of political talk in the weeks ahead. But for now, Pam and I are going to take a quick break to relish in this unusual feeling of hope and optimism. We'll be right back after these words from our sponsors. Walmart Plus members save on meeting up with friends. Save on having them over for dinner with free delivery with no hidden fees or markups. That's groceries plus napkins plus that vegetable chopper to make things a bit easier. Plus, members save on gas to go meet them in their neck of the woods. Plus, when you're ready for the ultimate sign of friendship, start a show together with your included Paramount Plus subscription. Walmart Plus members save on this plus so much more. Start a 30-day free trial at walmartplus.com. Paramount Plus, a central plan only. Separate registration required. See Walmart Plus terms and conditions. This episode is brought to you by State Farm. You might say all kinds of stuff when things go wrong, but these are the words you really need to remember. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. They've got options to fit your unique insurance needs, meaning you can talk to your agent to choose the coverage you need, have coverage options to protect the things you value most, file a claim right on the State Farm mobile app, and even reach a real person when you need to talk to someone. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. This episode is brought to you by Indeed. We're driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search, match with Indeed. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. Listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com MBO. Terms and conditions apply. Getting into the main show today, as promised in the last couple of weeks, uh, as we wrap up the summer here and before we get into the onslaught of political nonsense that is inevitably coming this fall, we wanted to have a couple of easier episodes just to bid adieu to the summer months as we're getting into the fall here. And we thought for this week, since it's just me and Pam, that we could pick some interesting questions from Ask Reddit, pose them to each other as well as to our Discord. So Discord, as we're talking through these questions, would definitely love to feature some of your answers to them. So feel free to play along. I'll kick it off, though, with one that kind of tickled me, um, which is what is the adult version of finding out Santa isn't real? <laughs> I'll say mine has to do with filing taxes. Oh, okay. Um, mine's not very fun, but I, th I think it's just like, because I feel like this is kind of like the last frontier of disillusionment before you really become an adult. Um, I think it's just realizing that like your parents also don't know what the fuck they're doing. Oh, yeah. And they're just they like definitely people don't. who had kids and they're bumbling along just like everyone else. But I think that you you're programmed to look to your parents for answers. And it's kind of scary to realize that they actually don't really have them either. Yeah. And that sometimes you're going to have to be the one who goes out and figures the thing out. And like sometimes mm -hmm. your parents might learn from you, too. Yeah. I feel like mine with filing taxes was um, I had often heard this like when I first started filing taxes when I was like a teenager working at Target making no money um, I found that like I would get quite a lot of that money back <laughs> when I filed taxes and I would often hear like other adults that I worked with at Target saying like oh don't worry about that you'll get most of that back and it kind of set me up for failure the first time that I filed taxes and I didn't get anything back. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'm not getting anything. And because um, your parents were still claiming you as a dependent. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Did that happen to you too? Yeah. A lot, <laughs> a lot of my friends were like already like filing on their own and claiming themselves when they were 18. And my mom definitely, and honestly, as she should have claimed both my brother and I up until she wasn't able to. Yeah. Well, I'm like, and so here's the thing. Like I, I got so self-righteous about this at the time. I was like, you're taking money from me. But I it's know, like I, was, I did this. I was living thing. in their house. Right. Exactly. Like I was living in their house. I was eating, eating their food. They're probably helping you a little bit with other stuff. Like a hundred percent. So it, it totally made sense. But at the time I was like, how am I supposed to get independent? I don't how come all my friends get $500 back and I do take you my 500 yeah. or whatever it is. And I get nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's, it's funny to look back on that. Cause like at the time I definitely felt that like self-righteous teenage rage, <laughs> but then you get out there and you start paying your own bills and you're like, Oh, okay. Yeah. If I could, if I could claim someone who was living in my house, I would definitely do it. <laughs> right. <laughs> so next question here. And again, if you all are listening live, feel free to answer along oh wait we actually did get one from christina about Ooh. the santa question christina says my adult version of santa not being real is realizing that life is an endless cycle of figuring out what you want to eat cooking it and then cleaning up after the meal yeah <laughs> that's real yeah unless you door dash which is what i'm doing tonight so next one here what accomplishment however small are you really proud of i'm actually really curious to hear your answer to this Ooh, I feel like there, I feel like there are lots of little things that we should all be proud of ourselves for. Mm -hmm. Uh, I always feel it like a great sense of accomplishment when I figure out how to do something that used to be hard for me. I feel like a recent example for me, it's just super dry and boring, uh, had to do with like Google Sheets formulas. I'm very impressed that you're like, yeah, so good at those, honestly. Well, I don't know that I'm so good at them, but well, that's how it, there was, across. <laughs> it was like vexing me. And I was like, why isn't this fucking working? <laughs> and I finally got it. And I definitely like whisper screamed. Yes. When I got it right. <laughs> yeah. Lydia says most people are really proud of their Duolingo stretches. I agree with that. Yeah. It's that, hard to keep that up. Yeah. I feel like any kind of stretch, like if I get into a stretch with like working out, for example, yeah. and I'm like, I have a really good streak going on. I'll be really proud of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it feels good. Mm -hmm. um, what about you, Pam? Mine is like anytime I don't kill a plant and it actually grows. <laughs> <laughs> which is see like not to toot my own horn but it's like almost always i think may maybe i have inherited my grandparents green thumb but yeah it's like i uh, it's just so cool to see something like actually grow and i'm a big old plant nerd now i guess so i started like propagating and that's really um crazy because you just like you make free plants out of like plants you already had so now it's like i have two plants but i started with one plant what is this magic hey uh i'm really impressed with you on that because i don't think i've ever been able to keep a plant alive and like i honestly think this is gonna make me sound like an asshole i i think i just don't care enough to take care of them that's fair that's fair <laughs> do you know I actually started like gardening because I just needed like, um, like an excuse to get out of the house, you know, mm -hmm. it was like in a bout of depression. So it's like, what's going to get me out of this house? What's going to get me to like open these windows? It's like, I'll buy plants because if I spend money on house plants and then they die, then it's a waste of money. But then I'll feel bad because I killed something that I could have kept alive. So now it's become part of my routine in a weird sort of way. I mean, I guess I could have just used my dog, but it's not the same. Like I was always going to keep him alive. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, my, my dog and I are codependent with each other. There's right. no way I would let anything happen to her. Um, but for anyone who's like me and struggling to keep plants alive, Shane is recommending the Planta app. 
and says he hasn't killed any plants since he started using it. Ooh, so congratulations. maybe that's something I can look at. Um, but we got some other entries to the what accomplishment, however small, are you really proud of? Katie says, when I get the wordle and two guesses, that's always a really good feeling. I can't say oh, it happens yeah. to me a lot, but every now and then you'll get one. Feels I good. I need to get back into Wordle. That is a rush. <sighs> me too. Me too. I have like a gnat in here. And I it just is saw very it. much bothering me. Yes. I saw it. Yeah, I saw it again. <laughs> what the fuck? Well, I guess I guess he's along for the party until <laughs> I kill him when we're done with this recording. Um, Liza says, I'm proud of having gotten a couple of pieces of journalism published by This Week in Palestine this month, inspired by some convos on this show. Liza. Oh, that's so cool. You'll have to send them to us. Mm-hmm. Uh, April says, I'm proud of myself for moving to a city where my husband and I knew no one and yes. managing to make new friends and create a social life twice. That's that's tough. Yeah, it's brave, too, honestly. Yeah. Well, let's move on to our next question. What cringe memory haunts you at night when you're falling asleep? And we're not going to go to therapy here today. So I would say, like, keep it on the lighter <laughs> side. But I think we all have one, right? Mine oh, I have, is I have multiple. I don't know oh, about you, but <laughs> yes, for sure. For sure. The one that I feel like is good for the purposes of this show. I don't think I've ever talked about this before. So when I was in college, when I was an undergrad, um, I TA'd on a freshman seminar as a senior. So because I was the aide in that class, I was one of the two aides in that class. We were also part of putting together like a little Halloween mystery party for people. So we got like a dinner party game for them. And the dinner party game only had like a certain number of roles in it. And our class was slightly bigger. So I had to invent new roles to make them like fit in with what was going on in the game and also make it so they like went along with the plot of the game. And it was so good. Like, The lines I wrote for people were great. People were having a good time. And then when we got to the end where we were doing the reveals of like, who's the killer, I fucked it up. And the person who was assigned to be the killer was like, ended up going first, even though they were supposed to do their reveal last because I forgot like the numerical order that people were supposed to go in. So I like told him to go. And then I was like, no, 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 wait, 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 <laughs> <Don't> go. <laughs> and then I think most people found out about it. And I, uh, I feel cringe about that still pretty frequently. And it's been like over 10 years, more like 15. It's always like the silliest stuff that make us cringe right before we're going to sleep yeah like and like none of it matters and you think about how like nobody ever remembers but you remember i was trying to think of something that like i could um like so much of this is like so much of my cringe moments are like too embarrassing to divulge um on the main show maybe if it were after dark i would have told something else but um and this is just kind of like a silly thing but i just think about like the uh, the how funny it must have looked at the time and that's what makes me cringe so in freshman year of high school, I like we I went to like a smaller school, but the school's like by the time you go to high school in my hometown, they funnel in kids from like three different middle schools. And so there was like, I don't know, I guess like it just because like I, I wasn't really used to having like very much like attention from guys I was I was like misreading signals and there's this really nice guy that I met like the first day we were in social studies class and I didn't realize that he was like he was like trying to like walk me to the next class that we because we both had math class but not together and I just thought that was weird so he would literally be like oh we're both going to math like let's walk together and I would be like speed walking ahead of him the whole time and he would just be like running after me all the way up to the second floor and I I didn't realize until like halfway through the semester that his class was like on the ground floor so not only was this really nice guy chasing me 
all the way up to the second floor of the math building. Um, he also didn't need to. And I also definitely could have slowed down. And I was just like, I didn't understand. And I was like too embarrassed <laughs> to be walking with a boy to another class at like 14 years old. Yeah. yeah. And probably like a year later, you were like, damn it. <laughs> well, yeah. So like, and and then like th- there was some, of course, there's always like the one asshole that tells everybody, in your class. So like, then he got back to me. He's like, Oh, so-and-so has a crush on you. I was like, yeah, right. Whatever. Um, and it turns out that was true, but the irony was that like later I ended up having a crush on him. And so we just like, never, like nothing ever happened, but yeah. You were like, I ships think about crossing in the ships night. Crossing. <laughs> yeah. But I just yeah. think about how <laughs> awful it was that I literally was just like, I definitely could have slowed down. It's not nice. Yeah. But like, I don't know. You're a fast walker. I am if a fast walker because, because I'm the shortest in my family. So you have to be. Yes. But I'm, yeah. I'm, I was literally like zipping, zipping and zigzagging through crowds to get away from this guy. It's still trying to make conversation with me for no reason. And I think do about ever, that a lot. Like, yeah. Do you ever wonder if he remembers that? Like I, I do. <laughs> He's like maybe got kids at some at some point now and like he they're does. having they're they're having girl trouble in school and he's like let me tell you the story about I, ho- I hope I'm a good lesson yeah yeah let me tell you about Pam the one who got away <laughs> literally he was very nice we I mean like we had class together through like the four years very very sweet um have no complaints but yeah I think about how mean I was how mean it was to me to just be like running for no reason because he was really really nice I just like I was not secure in myself you know yeah I think that makes sense we've all been there like I also I definitely remember stuff like that where it was like oh that was a missed opportunity like I remember like yeah like I remember being like asked to dance at a school dance and I was like so shell-shocked that anyone would ask me that I like didn't say anything I just like stared until it got too yeah, awkward like, and they walked something. away. Yeah. yeah. And then, <laughs> then later, you're the weird girl like, that like doesn't talk. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Guess you never got asked to dance again. Um, know, right? But yeah, I mean, yeah. So yeah. I think that's just part of growing up though. I, I definitely think so too. But it is funny how like, like stuff like that is the stuff that you remember. I'm not like, you know, we're in our thirties now that should not make me, cr- it still does. Yeah. Well, and honestly, the brain is such an asshole because it always does this when you're like trying to fall asleep or when you really need to think about something else. It's like, no, let me rehash this traumatically cringe moment from when you were like 13 Mm -hmm. and make it impossible for you to think about anything else. Yeah, exactly. And then you're right back to that age. That's the worst part, right? Yeah, it's the worst. It's crazy how the brain works. (laughs) It's an asshole, like I said. Yeah. Uh, what's our next question? Oh, well, we're keeping on theme here. What's the most embarrassing thing you've done while being drunk? <laughs> I don't know, Pam. That could be a very long list. Yeah, I, I have a, I have a good one. Um, it happened on St. Patrick's Day. Okay. As, as all good drunk stories should. My friends Natasha and I were at a small... Um, club venue. We were waiting for like some bands to start playing and we had gotten there early because it was St. Patrick's Day and we were drinking and having fun. And we definitely were drinking a lot. And first of all, I really had to pee and it took me like a good five minutes to get the courage to get off the bar stool. Because at that point that like, you know, like I was like, Natasha, it's really far down. Like, I think I'm going to fall. It was not that far down, but depth, depth reception, you know? Yeah. Um, and then oh, once sure. I finally did, I very confidently walked towards the bathroom. Turns out it was not the bathroom. I walked right into the kitchen. And oh. like far into the kitchen because I was striding. Yeah. Yeah. And you're also just like in search of the toilet. Yeah. And then I was like, wait, there's no bathroom here. And they're like, this is the kitchen, sweetie. It's like, oh, okay, no. bye. Then I turned oh, God. around the, and I walked And the out. sense of urgency too, when you're like really drunk and you really have to pee and mm-hmm. you don't know, you can't find the bathroom. 
it's especially I feel like with like female anatomy. Yeah. It, you know, it's very like, OK, I got I got to go now. So so the funniest part was <laughs> it took me longer to walk to the kitchen than it would have to walk to the bathroom. The bathroom was right behind mm-hmm. me. I walked oh, right God. past it and walked into the kitchen. That's so funny. I definitely remember so many of these stories had to do with like being drunk at like podcasting events or Harry Potter cons. And I definitely remember, I definitely remember making out with like too many people, especially at the Yule Ball. Um, And then feeling really awkward about it later when I would cross paths with people, it would just be like, Hey, ew. <laughs> yeah, ew. Or like, or like, why do you look familiar? Yeah, oh, like, that's oh man, that's I was why. so drunk. I have no idea what happened last night. Did you have a good night? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's funny. just yeah. So that was that was mainly it. But we'll see if uh, anyone in the Discord has any stories. I will say Lydia for a throwback to the uh, cringe uh, memory is uh, Lydia gave us a cringe saying, which is saying you too at the wrong times. So like, yes. for example, enjoy your meal. T- you yeah. Too. If, or if the TSA person's like, enjoy your flight. And you're like, you too. <laughs> like, yeah. I've, I have definitely done this or like, Me too. if a delivery person is leaving food or something, and they're like, enjoy your dinner. You're like, yeah, you too. Although I'm sure they're having dinner at some point. <laughs> That's a good way to think about it. What's something you've been meaning to do, but you just can't seem to find the time? Mm. For me, it's always writing. Like I want to yeah. do more creative writing, but I just don't. I mean, it, it's such a bad excuse because everybody I know who writes professionally is like, nobody has time. You just make time. So it's a bad excuse because I should make time. And I was making time. I just got out of the habit. And now I just feel like it, I don't have time, you know? Yeah, I agree with that one. I just feel like planning that kind of time in general and like really staying on top of an agenda is something that I've really been trying to get better at this year. And I feel like I'm currently in a phase where I'm failing at it. Like I had a streak where I was doing so good staying on top of all my shit and like really being diligent about putting my planner together you know, a week ahead of time. And honestly, ever since I got COVID, I really have fallen off of all of that and have just like struggled to get back on. It's almost like you give yourself too much grace, which you should. Yeah, Yeah, I feel that. But there reaches a point where it's like, okay, like, I can't use this as an excuse anymore. I'm getting there. Laura, what is your pettiest pet peeve? I really hate it when people stop dead when they're walking places Mm. it's a huge pet peeve for me one just because it's like it's just disruptive to like the flow of foot traffic when you have people like just stopping and either like staring at their phone or like staring at a map or whatever it is instead of like getting out of the way to do that I also just think it's really inconsiderate So it like actually irritates me pretty significantly when people do that. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And I maybe it's top of mind because I just came from a conference. And of course, in that space, a lot of people are going to be doing that. Yeah. What about you? I'm sure I have others. That's just the first that comes to mind. Mine is when people stand too close in line behind you. Get away from me. It's like, I don't know you. And if I can feel your body heat radiating radiating off of you and onto my back, you're standing too close. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also like when you make, when you make like a concerted effort to move so that there's space and then they just move with you. Yeah. I hate that. I was actually in a, cause we drove home yesterday and I was in a sheets, which is a gas station on the East coast. And uh, I was experiencing that. And uh, yeah, I I just don't have patience for like, lack of social awareness in public settings like that. It's like, did we learn nothing from COVID? I kind of want to go back to the COVID days where like, I remember there was, I I had had to go to Best Buy for like, just to pick up a cord, which is, that's basically all you go to Best Buy for now these days anyway. Yeah. And 
I accidentally, me and this man accidentally brushed hands and we were both like recoiled, like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Do you want some hand sanitizer? Right. Because it was peak COVID. I was, I want that energy if you're in line behind me. Yeah. That would be nice, honestly. But no, people are just out here like open cough sneezing in public at this point. It's yeah. just it's like breathing uh, on so your neck. Nauseous. Well, uh, Zian is talking about the example of people in public, like bumping into you because they weren't paying attention, but then they get mad that they bumped into you. Yeah. I've definitely had this happen. I need to stop apologizing for that. I apologize even when it's not my yeah. fault. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's part of being socialized. It's true. As female in the society. I do the same thing. I apologize for stuff I shouldn't apologize for. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll be back in just a moment for a few more of these Ask Reddit questions. We're going to dig deep with each other and with our patrons in the Discord. Stay tuned. What did social media ruin for you? Oh, man. Apart from people. Yeah. (laughs) I think that like, this was probably a good thing. But I think before social media, I really had a false sense of security. And Mm -hmm. social media just made made me so paranoid. um, Because there, there have been a few instances where, you know, people have found out where I am at a certain time or yeah. even like my PO box address when I used to have one, which still felt like a little violating. And um, yeah, it was a really good lesson learned that you just need to protect yourself. And especially if you tend to go out alone, which I do a lot, like not like, you know, like I'm out and about by myself. So I just need to be mindful of posting to social media if I want to. Like, just practice safety with that. Honestly, this is why a very long time ago, I stopped posting on social media if I was out somewhere or traveling somewhere. Because I don't just want to advertise where I am, but also that I'm not home. (laughs) Yeah, Um, that's the other thing. Because, like, we've seen too many stories about people like, openly posting that they're on vacation and then their house gets ransacked while they're gone. Um, Or people like when they buy new homes, they'll literally just take a picture of the house and put it up on social to show it off. Probably only thinking that the people who like care about them are going to care about, you know, the house they just bought. But the reality is you just put that up for Pretty much anyone who wants to see it to see where you live. Mm -hmm. It's just too, it's like too risky, I think, to be doing that kind of thing. Yeah. This is another thing I used to do, Shane, in the Discord is saying, oh, remember Swarm slash Foursquare? Yeah, I stopped using that when I realized it's not really safe to be advertising where I am. Also, why most of my accounts are private. Yeah, it's tough because like, I I feel like I need to keep my accounts public um, for, you know, even like the sake of this show and just like, keeping my I hate to say my brand but you know it is important to prospective employers to see yeah. them active on social media and stuff like that so it's tough but yeah I definitely went through a swarm four square phase and it was really so fun to be the mayor but it's like it's so dangerous it is so yeah. dangerous and yeah I wish I could say I learned my lesson the first time um and I didn't it took like two or three <laughs> scares before I was like, yeah, I need to wow. Out and that's just running into people in public who mm-hmm. like showed up where they knew you were going to be. Well, it wasn't even showing up. It was like, I'm, I'm around the corner. Can we meet up? It's like, no, oh. I don't know. That was enough to like scare me. Yeah. I mean, I definitely, I know I've talked about this before, but like I learned my lesson about openly advertising where I worked. Yeah. And, like, That was a long time ago for MuggleCast, but like I openly talked about working at Target and like there are only a couple of Targets in coming Georgia. So it wasn't difficult for people to figure out which one. And I had a couple of cases where people just showed up at my work and it's definitely a little disconcerting for sure to experience that. Because it's like, 
you know, people don't mean harm, but at the same no. time, like, and, and it's like, and I'm sure you were too young to be like, this is not okay. Like, because we don't really know each other, but then it's also like, I have to be nice. It's like, no, we, we really shouldn't have had to. It's, it's tough. And I think that like, it's complicated and it's also hard because like, again, I don't think people, a lot of people mean to be creepy about it, you know? No, I think, I think most people don't. Yeah. And like in these, I didn't think that that was their intention at all, but it was also just kind of like, yeah, it feels violating. Like, like yeah. That's, that's like your workplace too. Like, yeah. You know, there's like that dual environment too of like being polite to someone just because they're a customer in the store. Right. And then right. there's this added layer of like, you know, you listen to my podcast and I like, obviously I would love to talk to you, just not here. <laughs> you right. Know? Exactly. Not while I'm folding t-shirts in the junior section. Yeah. <laughs> Shane is saying, meanwhile, I saw Andrew at the Orlando Air airport while traveling for leaky con and uh-huh. i still didn't go up to him oh oh shane you could have honestly up to him. I, that's a you, that's different th- i think that's different yeah because we, Cause you we didn't, all like, do know each other yeah well also like you didn't you were there too it's not like yeah you went there like you with the purpose up. of like beating andrew because you saw he checked it on foursquare or something yeah but i i bet he still appreciates this though because like you never know. Like sometimes when people are flying, they're like tired and they just want to get where they're going. So mm-hmm. that was that was still considerate of you, considerate. Shane. Yeah. Let's see. Zian also calling out people posting pictures of their cars and not oh covering their God. license plates. Yeah. This is another thing. I've never done this, but I've definitely seen people do it and it freaks me out. I would yeah. be way too nervous. Also, like, like people that post, like, the view outside their window sometimes, like, not like normal, well, also normal people, because you never know. But, like, if you have any sort of, like, notoriety online and you're doing that, you're dumb. I'm sorry, but, like, you need a better yeah. team that's telling you not to do that. Agreed. It needs to be, like, nothing identifiable. Yeah. <laughs> like, foliage and nothing else. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Well, this is getting a little bit deep here. Um, what did you think life would be like 10 years ago? And what do you predict for life 10 years from now? Well, I definitely didn't think life would be like this 10 years mm-hmm. ago. And like, that, it's like a good and a bad thing. Like there are some things that are going really, really well in my life. And there are some things that I wish were different. Mm. But 10 years ago, I made a lot of the choices that got me into this situation. Like I talk about it ad nauseum, but like my student loans Mm -hmm. um, or like figuring out like what are the right steps to take in a career and what is it that I want to be doing long term. So like I think in terms of my personal life, I'm things are like better than I thought they would be 10 years ago. But in terms of like what I'm doing with my life, I I would love to be doing a lot more of what we're doing right now, (laughs) honestly. Yeah. Well, and to that point, um, 10 years ago, I didn't think that we would still be podcasting, you know, I think that like, or I should say, I didn't think I would still be podcasting. I feel like every time I think that podcasting is over, it comes back into my life. Uh, usually as Same. a result of Andrew and you all. And so it's like, yeah. I, I think at this point I've considered it a sign that it's like meant to stay in my life. And I'm very grateful for that. So I also hope that we're still doing more of this, maybe even on a bigger scale in 10 years. That would be nice. Yeah, I agree. You have big dreams. Yeah. I mean, honestly... Especially would, with uh, the with the new show, we have big dreams yeah, for the new show. We always have we dreams really for do. millennial. So yeah, and I mean, we're like honestly, we're trying to like expand our reach into YouTube and things mm-hmm. like that. So we definitely have big plans. We'll see. We'll check in in ten years and see if we're where we thought we would be. Yeah. I think this is a good one for us to end on. Get like nice and conspiratorial. 
what superstition do you at least partially believe in and follow? So I have a dumb, a kind of dumb one, but it's like, so first of all, I will remind everybody that my, my family is Mexican. And so Mexicans and I think Latinos in general are very superstitious. And so my grandma always grew up saying things like, oh, don't do this or this is going to happen. But the one that's always been ingrained in me to the point where like, it feels wrong when I see other people do it is like putting your handbag on the ground because that's bad luck. Mm. I don't know if you've ever heard of this. I've and heard of yeah. that. Yeah. And so like, and it really sucks because like, I can't bring myself to do it because my grandma has always said, if you put your hand handbag on the ground, you're like disrespecting where you put your money. And so like the money is like the energy of like making more money is like coming out from under your bag and into the ground because you're disrespecting where you place your money. So sometimes I'm rolling with a big bag and it's like so uncomfortable to figure out where I'm going to put it. And it really sucks that I'm like, I can't put it on the ground because like, what if it's true? (laughs) I need all my money. And I see so many other people that like put their bags on the ground. And it's also just like a, like, don't do that. Like, I want to reach out and be like, don't put your bag on the ground. It's bad luck. Yeah. So I'm definitely going to be one of those people who uh, piques your anxiety with this, Pam, (laughs) because I am someone who puts (laughs) my bag on the ground. And actually, Mark's mom frequently will like see me do that. And she'll like, she won't say anything. She'll just pick it up. And very sweetly tell me, like, you should treat it like a jewel. Oh, that's a good way to do it. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, I know it's just a bad habit. Also, I'm gonna get there's, you... also there's no money in it. So I'm going to get you my favorite <laughs> little accessory. And it's like, it's a clip of it's a clippa. That's what it's called. And it looks like a bangle. And you can just like put it on any bag and then you can just like hang it on the side of the table. It's the best thing I've invested in the last yeah, year. Yeah, honestly, maybe maybe I do need one of those. Because then at least asking, like, you know where the bag is. You know, I guess you know when it's by yeah. your feet, but anyway. Yeah, but Shane is asking, is that why every nice restaurant in Mexico City has bag stands next to the table? Probably yes. Probably yes. I've never been to Mexico City. I've always wanted to go, but I would not be surprised. I don't know if I have like a particular superstition that I follow. I will say like having grown up like in and around Appalachia, like there's some of that that like worms its way in. Like I think I do have like a healthy like respect for not interfering with the wilderness particularly at night so like I'm not gonna go be in the woods at night if I like there are plenty of times where like and I mean we're in Atlanta so we're like not we're not quite in Appalachia but we still have a lot of that like Mm -hmm. surrounding scenery and landscapes that are a lot like it and if I'm out walking her at night and I hear something weird or I just get a funny feeling that I can't explain I just immediately turn around and go inside and I'm just like nope not today yeah I think that you not today I think a lot of it too is like respecting because it for a lot of these cultures like even voodoo is almost part of a religion and like you might not believe in it but there's like I mean they believe in it really and I think there's like there's power in belief Yeah. And so like you should respect what you don't understand, you know, Uh, so I don't blame you. Are you one of those people that's like, if if you saw it, no, you didn't. If you heard it, no, you didn't. That's Mexicans kind of do that, too. It's like, yeah, you didn't hear anything. Just go back inside. (laughs) No, because and I mean, even and my feeling is like, I feel like that kind of applies to like being in a city too. like sometimes you're going to past things that are happening in a city and it's best to just avoid direct eye contact and keep it moving because you don't really want to engage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Obviously if someone's like hurting somebody else, that's a different ball of wax altogether. But like, 
I think that is wisdom that applies to a number of different situations where it's like, don't fuck around and you won't find out. Yeah. It's funny how that's like applicable across <laughs> so many across, different like, scenarios. People and belief systems. Yeah. yeah. Liza's saying it just sounds like trusting your intuition, which makes total sense. Like that feeling, that anxiety, that fear, that like, uh oh, this is an uh oh feeling. I gotta go. Like that's your body protecting you. Yeah. Like, and that's millions of years of evolution, like giving you a little bit of a nudge and saying, yeah. you should not be here. <laughs> Yeah. And it, it can, you're, you know, to that point, it can even apply to like mundane things. Like I, I was having some car trouble a few weeks ago and when we have a, a family friend who's a mechanic and um, he said he would come and like take care of the car and obviously just pay him cash, call it a day. So I went to go to the ATM to take cash out and I just like had a bad feeling. I was like, doesn't feel right to, to be here. There was like a car there. Like nobody was getting out. Like the person wasn't getting out of the car. I was like, well, okay, I'll just check for like a skimmer and like the machine felt like a little rickety and I was like, mm, this doesn't feel right. I'm just going to leave. I have a bad feeling. I'm going to go yeah. down to the grocery store and I'm going to get money out that way, you know? Yeah, I feel that. I've definitely had that experience of like pulling in to get gas somewhere and it's yeah, like totally deserted. Too. It's yeah. dark. There's one car parked like not even next to a gas pump, but like way towards the back near like right. the side of the gas station. Nobody's around. And I'm just like, mm -mm. Mm, no, go to the next one. Not even getting out. Yeah, not today. I would like yeah. to live. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, we got a couple of things I wanted to follow up with here. Zian says sweeping at night. If you sweep at night, you're sweeping away good luck. You know what? My grandma has something about that, but she doesn't. Um, she says you shouldn't sweep over an unmarried um, woman's feet. Because oh. that, that will guarantee that they don't ever get married or mop. That, that was the big thing. I guess maybe it's similar to sweeping the luck. And like when I was younger, obviously my grandma's not around anymore. But when I was younger, she, my grandpa would like, sometimes he would rile her up by like pretending he was going to come and sweep my feet and she'd be like chasing him around the kitchen being like don't you dare do that like blah 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 this is and that so he would like yeah that was like his favorite game <laughs> that's so funny did you ever get the one about like you shouldn't go outside with your hair wet or else you'll get sick yeah. I feel like that's oh a pretty gosh. common one yeah she even like she would always ask me because I I've been like, uh, for the most part, I've been showering at night for a while now, just because like it takes so long to get my hair set. And so ever mm -hmm. since I started doing that and ever since, I, you know, and and um, and ever since I've gotten sick, every time I got sick since then, my grandma was always like, it's because you it's because you went to bed with wet hair. Yeah. She's like, that's why. And you're that's like, why I got sick. <laughs> you're like, but that's not how that works. But at the same time, yeah. like, I think there is a school of thought that makes sense there. Like if you like sleeping with ha wet hair isn't good for your hair. Right. Right. Like, so I think theoretically you could, could get sick off of it, but I don't know if it happens as fast as like grandma was saying it was right. Happen. Exactly. <laughs> I think that is like a, like an old world thing. And probably because like they didn't have like good heat, you know, in the cars mm -hmm. too back then and going from also she, she would always say like going from hot to cold to hot to cold so that was her thing like if the house mm -hmm. is warm and you leave the house with wet hair then you're in the cold but then the car is hot because you turn the heater on then you have to leave the car and then it's cold and, and yeah that was her whole oh, thing oh that's interesting yeah yeah I mean that'll definitely make you not feel good I feel right. like you might get a head cold like a little one yeah well, okay. That was really fun to kind of interview each other with these. So thanks for being down for this, Pam. Yeah. Also, thanks to all of our patrons in our Discord um, for sharing responses. We didn't get to share everyone's today, but I think this could be a fun format for us to look at in the future when we want to do a little bit of a more relaxed show. I think so, um, too. What's, uh, what's coming up in After Dark, Pam? 
So we're going to do it live. (laughs) A couple of weeks ago, we did a little like roll call tease on what the hype roll call is our new benefit for this year. We actually um, did it as part of our uh, physical gifts last year. So it launched as part of the physical gift. And so we thought it would be fun to give you all a treat of roll call if you're not pledged to that specific tier. And Laura and I just want to have nice little girls chat, a relaxed little girls chat to keep the theme of relaxed summer episodes. So yeah, we're just going to shoot the shit for a bit and hopefully you all enjoy. I know a lot of you say that you enjoy the unscripted, like relaxed conversation. So if you're that person, this is definitely going to be the after dark for you. After Dark is part of Mega Millennial, which you get every week when you're a patron or Apple Podcast subscriber. Plus, it is ad-free. Visit patreon.com slash millennial to pledge today. Spotify users will find a banner at the top of our show page, or Apple Podcast users can tap into the show and subscribe. And don't forget that this year's physical gift, which is our M Word Cloud t-shirt, is coming soon. So pledge now so you'll be eligible to receive it as quickly as possible. And in addition to that, we also have other Patreon benefits like live stream access, our monthly Zoom hangouts, and so much more. Uh, it's easy to get started as well. Apple Podcasts and uh, Patreon offer seven-day free trials. And also we have an annual subscription discount, which Laura details at the top of the show. All right, let's get into some recommendations before we wrap up today. Um, I wanted to recommend the House Labs. It's like a gloss slash blush. I actually have it here. I can demo for the camera. See, Um, but what I love about this is it's like a two in one product. So it's blush, but it's also like a lip balm. And it goes on so smooth and the colors are so vibrant. It's a little bit pricey, but I felt like I was able to justify it to myself because it's a two-in-one product. So I'm not having to buy like a separate blush or a separate lip balm. Um, And the colors are all really, really pretty. So the one that I have is Glassy Pomelo. Ooh, that does sound pretty. So yeah. It's really pretty. It's very pink. Chloe would love it. <laughs> I really want to try the House Labs uh, foundation. I keep hearing such good things about the entire line, but specifically the foundation. But I'll have to check that out next time I'm in Sephora too. And I wanted to recommend the book Degrees of Engagement by Jennifer Hennessy. Um, we, Laura and I had Jennifer on our other podcast, What the Hype on our smut episode, which was a really good time. And she offered up some really great insight with regards to um, like the process of writing smut for books and also how the publishing industry kind of affects the tone. And it's probably one of the, like my favorite episodes that we've been able to record since we launched the episode. So um, if you enjoyed that episode, I highly recommend checking out her a debut adult romance novel, which is again called Degrees of Engagement. It's out in paperback in the U.S. today. So if you want to f- pick up a physical copy, you can. And yeah, it's just such a fun read. There's um, fake engagement, dating. There's um, lots of fun little tropes there. And it really just centers on this uh, female protagonist who is tired of Um, her family not celebrating her milestones as a, as a single woman, the same way they would as, you know, they would her sisters that are already married or in the process of having kids. So, um, yeah, it's just a fun little romance novel. And if you're looking for something light to read as summer winds down, I would highly recommend checking that out. Listen up, pals. It's time to give you just a couple more reminders before we wrap. Make sure you're following the show in your favorite podcast app so you never miss an episode and leave us a review in Apple Podcasts and or Spotify. To stay in touch with us, email millennialshow at gmail.com or visit millennialshow.com. While you're there, you'll also find all of the links to our various social media channels. So please do give us a follow. Spotify users can also leave feedback directly within an episode. After Dark starts in a moment for patrons and Apple Podcast subscribers. Thanks all for tuning in this week. I'm Laura. And I'm Pamela. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.